This is Sports Talk with Phil Kornblut and Chris Bergen. Sports Talk is heard across the state on radio affiliates of the Sports Talk Media Network and is streaming live on SportsTalkSC.com as well as Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. The South Carolina Education Lottery lucky number to call in is 888-898-2525. That's 888-898-2525. Now, here are Phil and Chris with tonight's edition of Sports Talk. And what an edition of Sports Talk it is going to be. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome to college football season 2024 for the Tigers and the Gamecocks. I know others around the state have gotten a jump on them. Clemson started practice this afternoon. Gamecocks will do it in the morning. And this show, just like those teams, is bringing you the energy tonight. We are fired up, jacked up. Pumped up. I'm so fired up, jacked up, pumped up, Chris Bergen. I ran 10 gasters before I came into the studio just so well, I could have a Why didn't you do field. that Monday or Tuesday when the other teams in our state got started? Well, I was kind of building you're towards so, this. You're so Carolina Clemson-centric that we got we got to break you out of your shell, Phil, and I'll understand you. that there are several just teams in our state that have already begun practice. Of the Chanticleers, you know. Watch yourself. There are other teams in our state that began practice earlier this week. These I, guys are latecomers. I know. I'm Maybe pacing. that's what it is. You're you're used. To, you like getting up late. I'm so pacing myself. That, that must that must be what it is. <laughs> I'm pacing myself, but I wanted to feel. You know what the guys are going to be feeling. So, out on um, Two Notch Road this afternoon before I came in, I ran ten gassers in the traffic and. Uh, I must say that uh, it was quite impressive. It was quite impressive. I, I would imagine so. Clemson actually called a break today mm. about an hour before they were supposed to practice. They had a huge thunderstorm come through Clemson. I'm assuming the humidity's up, but guaranteed the temperatures went down. So they actually began practice stretching in their indoor before going outside. So they might have actually called a break in day one. Yeah. Yeah. They'll probably not day two, but, you know, at least to get started. Now, Dabo talked about he loves the heat, said he ran four miles today at lunch. Just to get into the spirit, so that's things. not as so, much that, like you. That's not as impressive as ten gassers. Well, true, on, especially on two nights. I'll, I'll give you credit for that. Or maybe I just had gas. That was what it was. <laughs> then you clearly did not eat at Sea Wells today. For I clearly did not. <laughs> I clearly did not. Well, I do pity the boys out there who, because it is no hot and it is humid. It was hundred plus on my way in, so. I'm sure everybody will take all precautions and be very careful uh, with these mm-hmm. players, man. You just can't, cannot take any risks. And uh, water breaks are mandatory. And you know, if guys start feeling kind of funky, you got to let them uh, step aside. You know, 50 years ago, your manhood would be questioned, but not anymore. Uh, no. Smart. You gotta, you gotta treat it smartly. So we'll hear from uh, Dabo Sweeney. Uh, anything uh, newsy out of his conference today? Uh, as typical Davo, very excited, positive. He feels really good about the team. Said they're probably as healthy as they have been in quite some time going into preseason camp. Really likes the way the guys came in, worked out throughout the summer. Thought it was interesting. David Hood from TigerNet asked him about the weights, you know, the, the big weigh-in day yesterday, and did anything surprise him? And Davo said, well, no, not really, because we've got these guys all summertime, so we know what's going on with them. So nobody's nobody that we anticipated being 250 pounds showed up yesterday at 300 pounds, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah. And he did joke towards the uh, tail end of his uh, press conference, got it in the audio as well. Uh, the Panthers are having their fan fest today at Clemson as well. So that had to be delayed because of the weather. But uh, Davo said he got to run into a Jadavion Clowney. And said, finally got Clowney to Clemson. Don't on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wasn't around. I, w- I was in the state, but I didn't follow recruiting nearly as much as I do now. Yeah. Where was Clemson's positioning with Jadavion before he decided to go to USC? Uh, as I recall, uh, never really much of a factor. Mm-hmm. They were actually more of a factor with Gilmore and uh, the linebacker, uh, Holloman. Yeah, am I right about that, mm-hmm. Holloman? Yep. They were more, if I'm not mistaken, I'll go back and check the history books, I believe that they were committed to Clemson, those two, before Tommy really? Bowden was fired. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. And, and then they opened it back up. Double check me on that. I, I could be wrong, but for some reason I think that to be the case. But I think Clemson was more involved there. 
Uh, Clowney was more, um, I don't even recall Clemson being that strong of a factor with him, to be honest with you. Remember, too, with Clowney, he carried on his recruiting two weeks past signing day because he wanted to announce on Valentine's Day. Which was, what, his birthday or his mother's birthday? Yeah, something, or something like if that. If I remember the story. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, Coach Bobby Carroll, bless his heart, he wanted Clowney to be the number one player in the country. And he pushed him and promoted him and pushed the media. And doggone if he didn't. Of course, he deserved <laughs> it. Really good. He yeah. deserved it, I'm sure. I mean, he's probably as good a running back as he was as a defensive end. Uh, he Gosh, just could ran. You imagine him turning the corner over, on an option? Oh, over. Ooh. I mean, I remember the first time. Coach Carroll mentioned his name to me. I was checking on some players, and he said, I got a young guy coming up by the name of, all right, watch the name, Jadavion Clowney. And I, you know, that was a mouthful to begin with the first time mm-hmm. I heard it. And he was just a young pup then. And, of course, he, he grew and he grew and he grew, and he became uh, one of the all-time greats in this state. And he's had a – I think he's had a better-than-average NFL career, maybe not the kind of career you expect for a number-one pick. Um, he's moved around a lot. He's made a bunch of money. He's had to deal with some injuries. Not sure he has been the consistently dominant player that he was expected to be. Maybe he had some. I would agree with that. Maybe he had some some seasons a couple of er, in his early in his career before the injury sort of caught up with him a little bit, where um, you know he was dominant. But um, I think age and injury maybe they have caught up with him a little bit. But yeah, Clemson hosting the Panthers today for a fan fest. Uh, which is getting rained on, like you mentioned. But what a coup for Clemson yeah. to to put that on. Um, I'd like to know what the rationale was. Of course, maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe South Carolina. I don't know if they approached South Carolina, but uh, could, they, could South Carolina have held something like that at Williams-Brice considering they've got this big soccer thing going on? Uh, Saturday night? Probably not. Probably not. And, um, you know, you wonder if, too, if – and I know David Tepper was not around and uh, clearly does not understand the history of the Carolina Panthers, the way he treats our state. But nonetheless, you wonder if it's somewhat of a, a thank you to Clemson for hosting them during the uh, team's first year as an NFL franchise. Can't yeah. have, you know, can't have training camp at Watford, but we can do a fan fest at Clemson to yeah. appease everybody in the Palmetto State. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's not – I mean, that was the previous owners who uh, used Clemson right. for that first year after uh, Mike McGee said no to, to williams Bryce. Um, and, of course, even though um, Jerry Richardson was a Watford guy, his son Mark was a Clemson guy, played football at Clemson. So mm-hmm. they had strong ties to Clemson. Through that family, I don't think David Tepper, to my knowledge, has any connections with with Clemson. Trust me, I'm not trying to give David Tepper credit for anything. I was just trying to find an explanation or a reason yeah. for that. But the way Tepper has treated our state, I couldn't care any less anymore if they come down here or not. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, it is nice though for Clemson. I, I think that's a really cool thing for them to be able to host Fan Fest. But you wonder how many of the Panthers fans in Charlotte, in particular, are really excited about that. Yeah, or how many from that part of South Carolina actually mm-hmm. uh, turned out, especially with the uh, iffy weather. Over at USC today, we had Shane Beamer for a half hour. We had the entire offensive coaching staff for a half hour. Had the entire defensive coaching staff. Oh, let me uh, back that up. We had the entire coaching staff for a half hour. They weren't split up. They had the offense and the defense together, but they were there for a half hour. And then you had offensive players for a half hour and defensive players for a half hour. So you had plenty to choose from as a reporter walking around there today. So I, I talked to several of the coaches and several of the players, and we'll play those interviews as we move along. One thing that um, – one little note that was very interesting to me from talking to Robbie Ashford, who's a very impressive individual to talk to, you can tell his maturity. Uh, he definitely believes in himself, and he's definitely not coming to South Carolina to be the backup quarterback. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's coming to compete. He might not win the job, but in his mind, he's going out there tomorrow to be, to begin a competition or to continue a competition – with Lenora Sellers, and the best man will win the job. One thing he told me, I asked him a question about his throwing and how that's been a knock against him. And he said when he was at Auburn, and I guess he was talking about last season, he would take four shots per game in his shoulder so that he could play. He, was, he had a bad shoulder. 
He says, I've never said this publicly. I've never told anybody. He said, but I got, I was, I was taking four shots per game. That's and, crazy. And, and that's why his throwing, you know, what he's saying was he was, he was playing with a damaged shoulder is what he said. So he's basically said, come watch me throw now. He said they would not have brought him to South Carolina if he couldn't throw. So he knows the knock on him has been his passing game. Mm-hmm. Now, I haven't watched him closely. I didn't watch him closely when he was at Auburn, so I don't know everything. I do know he's a terrific athlete, but he wants to be known as a quarterback not only who can run, but who can throw the football. So interesting stuff from him. And then, Did you say he had four shots a game? That's what he said. During a season. Wow. No, no, he said four that's shots. Amazing. I mean, I've got it on – I've got it recorded. Right. You'll, you'll hear the interview, you know, when we get to it. Um, but yeah, he said four shots a game. So, anyway, thought that was kind of interesting. And then – That's a dedicated young man to his craft. Yeah. Well, but what an athlete. You know, he, he originally signed with Oregon, played baseball out there. So, he's good enough to play – and Oregon baseball, of course, is top notch. Mm-hmm. So he's good enough to play at a high level of uh, baseball. Um, but football is what he wants to do. Football's his thing. He comes from Hoover, Alabama. Played at Hoover High, so he comes from a football hotbed for sure. And you know he's going to compete. Now, I talked to the North Sellers as well, and of course he's looking forward to the start of practice. And he knows what the situation is, and he knows that he's being looked at as the guy right now. But he also knows that. You got, you got, uh, um, you got the transfer, uh, and you got the Dante Reno, and you've got uh, Davis Davis Bevel, uh, you got Ashford, so he knows that there's competition in that quarterback room. So he's he's got to play well. He's got to play at a high level. And he, you know, his thing is protect the football, um, make proper decisions on when to throw versus when to run because he knows he can do both, um, and just move the offense. And put him in the end zone. So uh, we'll hear from those folks as we uh, move along. We'll hear from mm-hmm. Beamer tonight. And one one note from Beamer was he did confirm something that Gamecock Central had reported a week ago, uh, and he confirmed that uh, junior college defensive lineman Jerome Simmons is uh, not going to be with the team this season. Uh, his hope is an expectation is he'll be with the team in twenty twenty five. Otherwise, since last Thursday, I specifically asked him, because, you know, we usually meet when we meet with him. It's usually the next day that we find out somebody's not with the team anymore. And I said, uh, since last Thursday, have there been any other (laughs) changes on the roster? And he goes, no, we haven't brought anybody in. And he said, unless somebody left since my meeting with them 15 minutes ago, uh, everybody is still on the roster that was there last week. So. I'll say he left a little wiggle room in there, though. <laughs> 15 Just minutes. Just a touch. Just I, a touch. I think we'd have noticed if somebody was I, I getting so. in their uh, Camaro and driving away. Stor- you know? Storming out of the operations facility. By the way, two other notes from uh, Dabo today, and then we can move on. We'll hear more from him later. But Dabo mentioned that uh, former linebacker Ben Bolware is going to be an unpaid intern coach. Mm. He actually said he was fired up, and uh, Bullware, of course, fired up about it. And Dabo made, made the comment to him said, I told him he was a crappy fan. He's going to be a much better coach. And then he also said with regards to Barrett Carter and also Wade Wood as, he does not anticipate anybody contending with them for their starting spots at linebacker. He said those are dudes is yeah. what he called them. They're ready. Mm-hmm. So he does not anticipate any changes. Even if the freshmen play extremely well, he doesn't believe they'll be able to uh, compete with those two. Yeah, I wouldn't think so either. I think those guys are no, I would agree. solid yeah. locks. Okay, our phone number, 888 898 South Carolina Education Lottery. Lucky number for you right here on Sports Talk. We'll get to your phone calls in just a moment. The ACC, of course, yesterday released their preseason poll from the voting of the media at the ACC kickoff in Charlotte last week. And today they released the preseason All-ACC team. You have one Clemson player on the first team offense, or the only team offense. He only had one team, and it is Blake Miller at uh, offensive tackle. And so on the defensive side for the Tigers, you have uh, Barrett Carter, as Chris just mentioned, uh, on the um, first team defense or the team defense linebacker. 
And also from the Tigers, R.J. Mickens at safety. So three Clemson players, Barrett Carter and R.J. Mickens on defense. And on offense, you have the one offensive tackle, Blake Miller. The preseason player of the year is Cam Ward from Miami. He received 71 of 171 votes. O'Marion Hampton of North Carolina, running back, received 38 votes. Carter received 15 votes. Those are your top three. So the interesting thing to me when you look at this from a Clemson standpoint is not a single skill position player yeah. for Clemson on the offensive side, which is pretty much unheard of for a team that prides itself on quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, kind of tells you where things have gone as far as those particular areas, at least in the minds of uh, the people voting in this poll. Jaden Ott must have had an outstanding season last year at Cal with regards to all-purpose yards. He's the all-purpose player and also one of the uh, first-team running backs to slide in there above Phil Maffa, who I believe is going to have an outstanding season. And all we've heard about Antonio Williams and some of the other guys, I guess uh, the voters within, with inside the ACC boundaries of looking at Clemson is wait and see. Now, with, with Miami getting, I think, five – members to the preseason all-ACC teams. I'm not surprised they ended up being picked. Well, I am a little bit surprised, rather, that they your poll had them second, but the mm-hmm. poll we saw yesterday had them third. Yeah. If if they feel that highly about their team and evidently not as highly about Clemson, I, I don't understand why Miami didn't end up at, at least at second, if not challenging Florida State for first in the preseason poll. Maybe they're holding coaching against them. Possibly. Maybe they're deducting points based on – because, look, they've had their gaffes with coaching mm-hmm. decisions there last couple of years. So um, I'm just saying, thinking out loud, maybe, maybe mm-hmm. not. But I think the fact that um, Cam Ward was voted the player of the year tells you what people think about him as yeah. a quarterback and the immediate impact that that will have on Miami and also on the ACC. That's why I voted them – as highly as I did when I sent my uh, when I sent my poll in, you mentioned Jaden Ott. Jaden Ott is closing in on becoming the all time leading rusher at Cal. There you go. And I mean, he is a terrific player. Uh, I did vote, I believe. Go back here and check my voting. I believe I voted for Tyler Brown for the all purpose player um, for the AP. I'm sorry for the ACC um, all preseason team, but um, obviously. Didn't get enough votes to out uh, out poll the player from Cal. So, um, you know, again, doesn't matter. You go out and you prove it on the field in the season, and all this will be forgotten. If Clemson goes out and beats Georgia and uh, comes out of that first part of the season five and zero, oh, you can uh, you can take this poll and shove it, as the Tigers would say, because <laughs> it won't yep. it won't. It won't mean that anything, the, the bandwidth that uh, sent it out around the world, it won't even be worth that um, if you get out and, and take care of your business. Okay, uh, 888-898-2525, South Carolina Education Lottery, lucky number for you here on Sports Talk. Go ahead and jump into some phone calls. We're going to hear from the coaches, Mike Morgan at 7.05. So we got a full show for you tonight on this big Thursday edition of Sports Talk. And... Uh, well, he said he wasn't calling in tonight, but he's calling in tonight. It's Gamecock Larry here on Sports Talk. Welcome in, Gamecock Larry. How are you? I'm doing just fine. The reason why I called in, I got to correct Mr. Phil. Mr. Phil said my birthday was yesterday. My birthday is to, was today. I'm feeling good like an old man should. My doctor came out, spent an hour doing this and doing that. Everybody, I, but I just want to say I appreciate the calls and the cards and all. But, Bill, I'm going to start my trash talking with you and me. And the Tigers and the Gamecock. Okay, first I want to tell you, you said when Jordan, when Crimson beat Georgia go 5-0, and 
Let me tell you something. Clemson ain't going to beat Georgia. In fact, I'll give you 17 points right now. Oh, my goodness. Uh, 17 points. I'm taking them. Give them to me. Okay. I'm taking them. You just... You call and let me know. Are uh, you? Wait a minute. Tell you're, me what? You're, me, you're, uh, you're, you're, yep, son. <laughs> you're going to give me Clemson and 17 against Georgia. Clemson and 17, and I'm going to tell you something else. I will guarantee you, Josh, well, Josh, I, I don't know whether he's a Clemson or a Gamecock, but I guarantee you, Chris, and old Tiger Bryant up there, the Gamecocks will win more games than Clemson will this year. Mm. Now, I'm feeling pretty good, uh, but just one thing the Dr. Thomas sit back, go ahead and accept it. Don't worry about nothing. Good Lord, take care of everything. Let your people, let us do what we can for you. And you just take it easy. I said, yes, ma'am, that's what I'm going to do. That's good and advice. I want to, again, I love all y'all. And, and oh, yeah, Phil, if you see Pat, tell Pat to drop by Saturday. I'd like to see Mr. Pat. I ain't seen him. I ain't seen him. Well, I ain't never seen him. But it seems like I've known you all all my life. Mm. But now let me make sure let me make sure we get this right. So today, even though we did happy birthday and all that last night, because I think you told us it was last night. But anyway, uh, today is your official birthday, correct? Today is my official birthday. All right. Well, let's everybody let's do it again. Just because today, ah. yesterday was just sort of a trial run to see if we could pull it off. So let's try it again. Here we go. On a three and a two and a one. Happy birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. you. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Gamecock Larry. Shane Beamer says happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. To All right. You. There you go. Now it's official. The big nine zero. Okay, let me listen to the radio a little. My, my radio don't, I, I can't get no signal where I'm, they got me in my house. I can't get no signal. I want to listen to Tiger Brian call in. I want to see what he got to say. All right, we'll see Tiger if Tiger Brian. Brian calls in. We'll see if he calls in. He gets a little busy this time of day, you know. Uh, we'll see if he calls okay. in. Okay, I enjoy it. I love you all. and. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Let everybody hear it. Go Tigers. <laughs> what? 17. Oh. 17. Plus, give you 17. Tigers. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, uh, oh Wildcat. Wildcat Willie dropped by the, this morning to burn me some oxygen. Boy, I tell you <laughs> what. That's just, that's just t- no, well, I can't win it. They just take good care of the old man. That's good. And all I can do is sit here and just take it easy. Fresh oxygen is run. good. Fresh oxygen is good, especially if it's mixed the right way. <laughs> okay, just while you just while I take it easy, there's nothing I can do. There you go. Everything's going to be all right. Love all y'all. Thank you, Larry. Chill go out. Tigers. Happy, go Tigers. Go ha- Tigers. Ha- happy birthday for a third time this week. I think we've done it three times. Yeah, it's his birthday today. We've gotten it out of the way. And if, if you can find, I'm not a gambling man, but if you can find Vegas and Georgia's 17 and a half, please let me know because I'll put everything I own on Clemson to cover that. Yeah, 17 points. That'd be a nice cushion <laughs> to play with, you know? I think so, too. Yeah. All right, hit the break. We'll continue with phone calls. Coaches coming up. Mike Morgan, too. Be back in a moment. You know, this could be uh, appropriate 
for all football coaches. Why do you build me up, Buttercup? Just to let me down. Huh? I like it. I think that applies to every coach talking to his fans. Why do you bi- mm-hmm. call your coach Buttercup? Why do you build me up, Buttercup? Just there's to not let one fan me base, down. There's not one fan base going into t- this week thinking we're going to lose the opener. Somebody is. <laughs> yep. Gators. 50% of the teams will lose the opener, right? I mean, math tells us. You think the Gators are going to lose to Miami? Uh, Josh is a, happens to be a Gator fan. I, I don't do. know why he's a Gator fan. He's born in that. He's I hope we the, don't, but I, a Gator fan. I think we will. Yeah, I think you will too. Yeah, Miami is a critically a important program. game for Florida. Yeah, They've well, got to win that and, game. And is approaching for the Napier era at Florida. Because you look at the back half of their schedule – they they may not win their last five. What is it? Last five or six games? Mm. Mm. Or the first. I mean, their five. schedule's insane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, triple eight eight nine eight two five two five. Coaches coming up. We can squeeze in a couple of more phone calls if you want to join us. By the way, over by Williams Bryce today. Of course, uh, they're preparing for the big soccer friendly between my team, MU. Or I'm sorry, Man U. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Manchester United. <laughs> I'm trying to be hip and soccer like. Josh, you Man need to go to uh, a a sporting goods store in Columbia tomorrow and get Phil a Manchester United jersey <laughs> and let him wear it tomorrow night on the show. It's a good idea. I like that idea. W- would you wear it? Uh, yeah, if somebody gives it to me, I ain't buying. Well, get it. him a hat. He's he's a big hat person. Do so soccer see if people you can find wear a hats? Hat. Do soccer do people that? That's a good know, question. There's a lot of football fans question. wear hats, but I've never seen an English person or some, you know. Well, I heard Scott Powers from Experience Columbia uh, Sports. Uh, he was on television last night, one of the channels. He he said, "Man, he goes like every hotel room in Columbia is sold out." I mean, this they're uh, really people, oh yeah, he's, people are coming from all over. Of course, the game is a sellout, eighty thousand plus. Now they do have a few tickets. I'm looking here. Um, there's uh, some upper deck tickets available still. Um, a few in the end zone, uh, some in one corner. Uh, there's some 50-yard line tickets available. I'm looking at the prices on Ticketmaster. They're ranging from $140, Section 307, which I think is upstairs, yeah, $140 to $221 on the 50-yard line downstairs. Row 5, I'm sorry, Section 5, Row 52, you can get two, get a ticket for $221. Is Let this me, the first non-Gamecock football game, or event rather, taking place at williams Bryce Stadium since you two performed there back in the early 90s? Well, if you're not counting like uh, – They've had more concerts than that. Not high school, yeah. Okay, yeah, say, and, high, and high school, not the high school state championships, yeah. right? My, like, didn't have the they Ro- had more concerts there? Didn't the Rolling Stones play there one time? I think I know you, you mentioned you two played there. Yeah, YouTube. actually, I was at that Thank concert. You. A really good show. Yeah, I was going to give you a little soccer play by play. Oh, yeah. excellent! And by yeah. the way, I found you a jersey on Fanatics for a hundred bucks. Oh, good. Well. Go ahead, send it to me. You pay for it. I'll be happy to take it. No, soccer play-by-play is uh, he kicks it over here, and he kicks it over there, kicks it over here. It goes into the corner. It's a corner throw. They throw it in front of the goal. Kicks it. Misses the goal. Throws it inbounds. There's a foul. Guys line up, protect their uh, important parts. I wouldn't, by the way... Chris, there's Guys. been nine concerts since you since you two played okay. at uh very cool. Yeah, Paul McCartney, the Rolling Stones. No, 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 no. Paul McCartney at the he was at Carolina Coliseum. Uh, he was at the CLA. It says Williams Bryce Stadium, 1992 and 1993. Oh, okay, that was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, anyway, so tickets not unusual. Tickets are still available. Um, if you want to buy them for that uh, event, look out for the. I want to see how many hooligans come into Columbia. Of course, again, I shouldn't make fun of them. They're no different than the tailgating crowd at any college football game, right? Exactly. When they get out of hand. Uh, all right, phone number, 888 Let's go ahead and jump to uh, the coaches. It is a talking Thursday. It's a big Thursday. We heard from Dabo Sweeney and from Shane Beamer. 
uh, this afternoon as they uh, are preparing to start camp. Clemson is actually underway with their camp. USC begins in the morning. Uh, to be fair and down the middle, as we always are on Sports Talk, trying to decide who goes first. Since both uh, press conferences were about the same time. Now, Beamer started about 3. I think Sweeney started around 3.30. So we're going to flip a coin. Yep. And we're handling we right the uh, the honors for that will be Mr. Bergen at the Bergie Palace in Sardis. And American Quarter. So, Phil, you just have to decide who is who. Whose heads, whose tails. Josh, whose heads, whose tails. Gamecocks are going to be tails. That's right, because they have Makes the feathers. Yeah. They have mm-hmm. the feathers. Of course, the Tigers have Tigers a tail. Have tails. Yeah. So the Tigers are heads. Tigers right, are heads. Gamecocks are. Okay. Mm, what you got? And it is a head. So, so Tigers. Tigers. Dabo. Tigers going first. All right, Dabo Sweeney, I'll let you lead into it. Uh, Dabo Sweeney met with the media after running four miles at lunchtime in the 90 plus degree heat up in Clemson. He was awfully proud of himself about that. Bet Talked he was. about a wider. A wide array of topics before his team was scheduled to go out on the practice field and had to wait a little bit out a thunderstorm. But eventually the uh, Tigers are out there opening up preseason camp today. And here's a little bit about what Dabo had to say about the start of the 2024 season. All right. Short and sweet. We're ready to roll. Excited to get back on the grass, man. This is uh, it's, uh, never gets old. This is, you know, like I said, a week or so ago, everything builds to this. And, you know, this is what we love to do, you know, to be able to get back into the meetings, get back onto the field and, uh, you know, just start putting it together uh, and, and getting ready to go compete against some other people. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've had a good couple of weeks as far as staff wise, getting ready with our meetings and prep. And then last couple of days with the players uh, trying to get them, you know, acclimated from a, program standpoint as well and uh now we can now we can uh, get out there and 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 get on with it um and get get to get to work on the football side of it so uh ready to roll talking about the heat i can't remember a start ball camp this hot in a long time but as a coach you like that right you love to get these guys out there and sweat them up as i tell you all the time mo hotta mo better uh you know i love it you know ran ran about four miles today at lunch um you know it's I love the heat. You know, it's it's you got to they practice in it, they train in it all summer long, so it's nothing new to those guys. I mean, this is this is what they do. So, got a good plan as far as our acclimatization and how we ramp up at practice and and um you know, it's a little different this year because you 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 got to prepare for a longer season. Uh, you know, there's there's you could play as much as 17 games. You could play all the way to late January. Um, you know, so you know, tweaked a couple things as far as how we go about our camp and 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 uh, just the, our plan as far as making sure we got our rest days built in and, and recovery opportunity and all that type of stuff. But uh, they've been training in the heat all summer, and uh, so just be another day for them. Oh, Brent Wesco, uh, we 182 <clears throat> yesterday. I mean, you feel pretty good about him physically where he is going this season. Play sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt good about him in the spring at whatever, you know, 170. Uh, you know, he showed he showed up and and really caught on quickly and uh, really competed all spring. And, and he, he demonstrated that that he could mentally, um, you know, do what he needed to do and physically do what he needed to do this spring. But uh, it's about just becoming the best version of himself since he's been here. So, he, you know, him getting stronger, bigger uh, will help him just compete better and help him. It'll accentuate, you know, what he already does well and accentuate uh, those things. So, uh, you know, proud of him and all the guys and, and how they, you know, how they've worked hard. They, they The team's done a great job. We're big. Um, we're strong. And, um, you know, we've got a, we've got a – a lot of guys that really bought into what they needed to do from a nutrition standpoint and a, and a strength conditioning standpoint. So good summer from that aspect. Now we got to get to work on the field. I think Peter Woods told us during the spring he was shooting for 295. What is 319? Is, can you give us your assessment of that? Yeah, as I said, it's about the composition. He's really lean. Um, you know, he's just – he's a freaky dude. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a very lean guy. You know he's leaner than guys that weigh 280, in in some cases. You know so, um, just to 
a unique, a unique human being. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. He can run for days. Uh, he's in great shape. He's going to play a lot of snaps. Um, you know, and he's going to play multiple positions. You know, he's going to he's going to he's going to play. Um, you know, probably every position across the front. But but obviously, when you're playing out and in, um, there's a little bit more space involved and, and things like that. But I mean, he he crushed every number. I mean, he just he's just a big, strong kid. Uh, he looks at a weight and he gets strong. I mean, uh, so he's in a good place uh, with uh, with his body composition. You mentioned uh, two weeks ago about injuries. You guys are entering a preseason kind of more healthy, more healthy than compared to last season. Is that still the same entering uh, today? Yeah, y'all see that. This is probably you know um, the best we've been in a long time going out to day one. Um, and we're 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 ready to roll. Uh, I think uh, you know just uh, uh, Miles Oliver, who who's been out. You know he tore his ACL last year. He's 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 at one, but um, I think we got maybe two guys in green, maybe that are just kind of little ticky tack things that they're kind of pushing through from coming out of training. But um, we're in a good spot right now. Yeah, but being able to have so many different. Additional coaches on the field. With special teams, does that change anything procedurally when you've got like a Ryan Allen who can kind of come in, work with the punters? Just didn't know if you divide things up differently or if it means anything different for the kickers who normally don't have dedicated coaches to them. Yeah, it changes everything. we got a one to one ratio. Uh, there's going to be a lot of scrutiny. It's going to be, you know, it's, I mean, we've had, a, we haven't added staff. We had the same amount of staff that we've always had, but they, and you know they just have never been able to coach on the field, you know, within the rules, um, and and so they haven't been able to do that. Haven't been able to run meetings, you know, that type of stuff. So been able to do everything else. They can recruit. They can they obviously help support the coaches and game plan and all that stuff. But they they were limited as far as practice. So what it'll do is is you know and again you know it will make you more efficient and it'll create hopefully a lot of scrutiny and and. Um, just a little more um, attention to details across the board because everybody can coach, everybody's got a voice, and that's why I hired Ryan. Um, and because now, you know, I can have a true specialist coach that can coach on the field and kind of manage that group uh, from a specialist. And then, and then Will Gilchrist will be our director of special teams, and he'll he'll orchestrate everything. So it's it's really really good. I'm excited. And then and then all the coaches, you know, we're all they're all involved. Everybody, we got all these support guys that have been chomping at the bit to get out on the field and now they get the opportunity uh to do it so um you know in the in the past you had just your 10 coaches myself and the, and the four GAs and you had to have GAs because that was they could only coach if they were a GA so we, we don't even need to we converted all the GAs you know they don't we don't need a GA um you know all of our GAs already got master's degrees <laughs> they they we need them coaching uh we need them we don't we need them you know, you had to do that in the past, but now that everybody can, you know, we just converted all those and everybody's on the field and everybody's doing what they need to do. So I'm excited about just the, the amount of, like I said, um, attention that we'll be able to put on every single player. It be, uh, should be a lot of fun. Dabo, obviously fall camp is full of competition and position battles, but how do you build continuity when you have those position battles happening? Um, you know, that just – Part, it, that, that doesn't start now. That that continuity and chemistry and your leadership and your team development and all that stuff, that's been going since January. Um, we we we've started that in January. So if if you're trying to get that now on um, first day of practice, you're 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 behind the eight ball. Uh, we've got a close team, you know, and and this team is, I mean, literally, truly, they're very, they're very close. They really, I think they really love each other. That's been very apparent to me. I've had a lot of fun in the meetings with them the last couple of days and, and uh, just, you know, their energy, their vibe, uh, their things they've articulated. And just, you can tell that there's very good leadership, but they're close and that's important. Uh, so again, you don't, you don't do that on August 1st. You know, you're, you're, you're way behind it. You just continue that journey. And so they all know um, each other well. They all know the depth chart, you know, where we are right now. They all are going to get a chance to compete. Uh, but but that's also a big part of as you go through camp, because we've got about, you know, the next 
I don't know, tw- what, 20 days of just football. and you know, no school, just football, all camp. So <clears throat> kind of solidifying that team component, that togetherness, the chemistry uh, that's, I think, already in a really good spot. That's that's just a part that's woven into what we do. It's our meetings. It's our speakers. It's our uh, things that we do internally, um, you know, to make sure everybody really appreciates each other, knows each other, and so forth. All right, some comments from Dabo Sweeney, and there's more up on our website, sportstalksc.com, and we'll be covering the Tigers throughout camp, hearing from Sweeney, occasionally from the coordinators, and from players as they make them available. Same thing with South Carolina. And, of course, plan to hit the road next week to begin our Palmetto Pigskin Tour. Chris, for everybody else. There we go. That's that's the beauty of sports talk. So 50 coaches, will we get to hear from all of them by the end of the season? You know how ridiculous the field is going to look with all these coaches down on the field now? Oh, my gosh. We need, we need right. to about 15, 20 coaches for basketball, too. That would be great on the bench, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm telling you. Be back in a moment. Oh, appliances. We can't live without them, and eventually we have to replace them, but we don't have to pay more for the new ones, not with Carolina Discount Appliances. Do you want to go and shop at a bunch of retail stores and determine which one has the lowest overpriced item? Me neither. That's why my first call is always Carolina Discount Appliances. The philosophy is simple. No retail prices. None. It might have a scratch or a ding, but overall, it's new and will cost you much less than what you're going to pay anywhere else. So if you need a refrigerator, washer, dryer, stove, range, or microwave, they've got you covered. But for less money, same brands, same appliances, less money. And Carolina Discount Appliances is the home of the $40 down. Take it home today. No credit needed payment options. Regardless, Sherry has you covered. Call today, 803-770-3008. That's 770-3008. No matter where you're located, same number, same person. Sherry at Carolina Discount Appliances, 803-770-3008. 3008. It saved me money. It'll do the same for you. I'm attorney Jim Corbett. That's the sound of a big hit on you and your car or truck. I've been an attorney for more than 30 years, helping people who get injured in car wrecks and truck wrecks. If you have serious injuries, call Jim Corbett, 803-765-2968, or email me at jim at jimcorbettattorney.com. That's C-O-R-B-E-T-T. I don't get paid unless I recover for you. Jim Corbett Attorney, for your best recovery from a big hit, 803-765-2968, or jim at jimcorbettattorney.com. The South Carolina Education Lottery has a new rolling jackpot, and trust me, our state hasn't seen anything this big before. How big? Harbortown Lighthouse big? Bigger. Bigger than the Raffinelle Bridge? Even bigger. Not bigger than Table Rock. With this new rolling jackpot, Palmetto Cash 5 is officially too big to ignore. Palmetto Cash 5 draws nightly, so play today. Check if your numbers are winners in the Players Club app or at seducationlottery.com. Overall odds are 1 in 10. Top prize odds are 1 in 850,668. Great things don't happen all at once. Big dreams take time. And when it comes to saving for college, it's those small steps that make a difference. I'm State Treasurer Curtis Loftus. Future Scholar, South Carolina's 5-9 college savings plan, is designed to be taken step by step. You can start with any amount, contributions are tax deductible, and earnings grow tax-free. So why wait? Discover the smart, easy way to save for college at futurescholar.com. There's a lot of things we take for granted in our lives. Your home's AC will run cool. Your drive through coffee will be hot. And the car will start when it's time to take your kids to school. It's when things don't go as planned that you start thinking about who to call and where to turn. The good thing is you can prepare for life's most difficult days by calling the Larry Lucas Agency today. Larry is a State Farm agent that has been taking care of people across South Carolina for more than two decades. You probably have insurance, but switching is easy and bundling can save you hundreds or more. Most importantly, the Larry Lucas Agency can help you choose the protection you want at the price you want. All backed by South Carolina's number one home and auto insurance company. Visit LarryLucasAgency.com today or give Larry a call at 803-799-1998. Like a good neighbor, Larry Lucas State Farm is there. 
Deep in the heart of racing country lies a track too tough to tame. The perfect setting for the late season drama of the Southern 500. Outside lane gets the launch. One last chance to make a playoff push. One last chance to catch regular season racing. All clear. All clear. One last chance to plan a Labor Day weekend worth bragging about. Southern 500, baby. Yeah, yeah. NASCAR weekend at Darlington Raceway, August 31st and September 1st. Get your tickets now at DarlingtonRaceway.com. Okay, we're back. Sports Talk, Sports Talk Media Network, coming up on the top of the hour. Phone number 888 898 South Carolina Education Lottery. Lucky number. Going to hear from Shane Beamer after the top of the hour. Let's update a couple of other things that are going on that are important today. We have the first round of the South Carolina State Amateur Championship at the Country Club of Charleston. And for the 60th consecutive year, I was not invited to play. So, Zach Adams, 7 under, 64, he leads. Chase Klein, 5 under, 66, is 2 back. By the way, Zach's from Charleston. Chase is from Chapin. Matthew Doyle of Somerville is 4 under, 67. Good scores. Rowan Sullivan of Charleston, 68. Jed Dirksen of Greenville, 68. Adam Hart of Columbia, 68. Bronson Myers from Columbia, 68. So they're all tied at 68. So they would be tied for fourth. And then a bunch, I mean a bunch are in at 69. Chandler Mulkey of James Island. Matthew Baxley of Beach Island. Well, there is no beach and there is no island. Did you know that, Chris? Beach, beach Island. Beach Island does not have a beach nor an island. No. Oh, okay. I know somebody from know there. That. I know somebody who actually grew up in Beach Island. I have to plead ignorance. I'm not sure exactly where Beach Island is. It is down near um, Augusta, Johnston, um, oh. Petticoat Junction, Silver Bluff, all those little areas. Just right adjacent to the Atlantic Coast. Yeah. <laughs> Zachary Harold of Lexington, another one at 69. Jake Wichter of Bluffton. Levi Joyner of Prosperity. Oliver Rotterman from Daniel Island. These are all 69s. Brad Thorne from Spartanburg. Sam Jackson from West Columbia. J.T. Herman from Hilton Head. And Birch Harrison from Columbia. All at 69. So... You've got 17 golfers at 69 or better. That's some good playing. That's why we weren't invited, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> some good playing at the Country Club of Charleston. And then no you've got doubt. the Olympic golf competition taking place. And you've got uh, Hideki Matsuyama, 63. He's eight under par. He's got the lead after the first round. Xander Shoffley, just red hot, six under 65. Joaquin Neiman, 566. Emiliano Grio, 566. Tom Kim, 566. That's the top of the leaderboard. Scotty Scheffler, 467. Roy McElroy, 368. Okay, top of the hour. Shane Beamer coming up. Don't go away. back to Sports Talk on the Sports Talk Media Network. You can reach the guys with the South Carolina Education Lottery lucky number, 888-898-2525. That's 888-898-2525. Now back to Phil and Chris with a second hour of Sports Talk on the Sports Talk Media Network.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Sports Talk, Sports Talk Media Network on this big Thursday night. In just a couple of moments, we'll hear from USC football coach Shane Beamer as he addressed the media today on the eve of practice number one. They'll begin at 923 in the morning. Now, Chris, ask me why the odd start numbers for the Gamecocks for these practices. 923 in the morning. First off, I'm surprised they're not going earlier, but... I, I have no idea why you would not go at 9 o'clock or 9.30. Well, because... So why? Yeah. That's all you had to do was ask me. I wasn't asking mm-hmm. you for an explanation or a commentary about it. I was asking you to ask me so I would give you the answer. So I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is, for example, they're starting their practices at times like um, 9.23... Tomorrow morning, 9.23 on Saturday and Sunday, 9.18 on Tuesday, same, 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 11.34 on Saturday. The reason they have these odd numbers, as he explained, they're tweaking things in an effort to further prevent injury. His belief was, after going back and examining things last year, that they would go out to practice and they would not properly warm up before going into the warm-up. They would go directly from team meetings and go out and start stretching and running and would not properly warm up before that. So now they'll come out of their meetings and start practice like at 9.15, let's say, but they'll have like eight minutes of the stretching period and pre-warm-up period where they loosen up before they go into their warm-ups, which will start at exactly 9.23. That makes sense? The explanation makes sense. The question I have is he's going into his fourth year at Carolina. It's taken him this long to figure that out? Well, I mean, I guess you you live and you learn, and you go back and you examine why you had, I mean, so many injuries, soft tissue injuries, as they call them now, why you had so many of those last season that you were dealing with. And I think they concluded that maybe their guys weren't stretched out enough, weren't loosened Hmm. up enough before they got Mm -hmm. into doing some of these light drills, like like running little, little, um, I guess you wouldn't call them gassers, but running the lines, things that we get a chance to see in the first few minutes of practice. They want them even more stretched out and loosened up before they get into that. So that's why. Okay. Yep. Satisfied? Makes sense to me. Okay. A uh, couple of other things before we get to Shane Beamer. Georgia made the announcement today. Kirby Smart made the announcement today that receiver Ray Ray Thomas, or Ra Ra Thomas, whichever way you want to pronounce it, no longer with the team because he's had a couple of offseason issues. Very serious issues. He's a transfer from Mississippi State, so he has uh, been dismissed. So Georgia took some action there, Chris. Look at Kirby finally figuring out something a middle school coach could have figured out two weeks ago that the kid (laughs) did not belong on the team. But well done, Kirby. You got one. Spicy. You got about another 25 to deal with, but good job on this one. You're spicy tonight. Loving it. You're spicy. Like like you said, fired up. Football season's here. Uh, Let's see. Georgia, they began camp today. And according to uh, AJC, uh, defensive tackle Warren Brinson dealing with an Achilles injury. So that's one thing that they're uh, concerned about. Kirby Smart added that defensive tackle Jordan Hall had surgery after suffering a stress fracture on his tibia, expected to make a full recovery. So sounds like he's out. He was expected to be a key piece on the defensive line this season. Played in 10 games last season, made 10 tackles, so he's out. So, Christian Miller, Camden's Xavier McLeod, and Jordan Thomas get more reps on the defensive line. Brinson and Nazir Stackhouse are still expected to start on the line for Georgia. Also, Gaffney's Tyrion Ingram Dawkins working his way back from a foot injury, according to Kirby. Uh, He's expected to be Georgia's starting defensive end. Played in eight games last season, had eight tackles. And linebacker Smell Munden got a foot injury he's dealing with, missed spring practice. 
and the Orange Bowl, and he's limited. He also was arrested on charges of racing and reckless driving in July. Some question in this story, there is some question as to whether Georgia will play him in the opener against Clemson. Will that be a bonus for Clemson if he doesn't play? On the offense, running back Branson Robinson coming back from a torn patella tendon injury suffered last August. He is cleared to practice without any uh, limitations, according to Smart. And let's see, um, that the uh, freshman offensive tackle Marcus Harrison had foot surgery. Wide receiver Cole Spear is dealing with a foot sprain. Defensive back Chris Peel still recovering from labrum surgery at the end of spring. So they got a pretty lengthy injury report there at the University of Georgia. But that is not compared to their police blotter list, which is three times as <laughs> <No>. long. <laughs> three times and as long. And I think long. all of this stuff, Phil, is starting to uh, factor into, I think Clemson's get, uh, moving the needle here towards a much, much better shot to beat them oh. in the opener than I thought they would have had you know, a month or two ago. You know what we're both going to you know, By the time the game gets here, we're going to pick Clemson. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> we're going to talk ourselves. We're going to talk ourselves into it. You just, you just wait and see, because um, we'll be, you know, we'll be hearing all this great stuff about Clemson and all this boohoo, boohoo about Georgia. We'll eventually talk our way into uh, picking Clemson before that before that game rolls around. All right, uh, let's see what else I got for you here. Um, did that? Uh, oh, um, Todd Shanassy from the uh, Spartanburg Herald Journal. And I guess the Greenville paper and the Anderson paper, because it's all one paper across the upstate. Uh, Zeke Marshall, who had nine picks last season at Westside, is leaving. And he has announced, Zeke Marshall has, he's transferring to Rabin Gap Naguchi School and reclassifying for 2026. So that is that, um, that is that, I guess it's a private school, you would call it that has an outstanding football team, produces a lot of uh, big-time players. So he is transferring there and reclassifying for 2026. Zeke Marshall leaving Westside. So that is a uh, Mm. a blow for the Rams. All right, and let's see what else we got here before we hit the break. football tonight. We do have NFL tonight, don't we? Yes, we do. Texans and Bears, and for some reason, Caleb Williams is not going to play tonight for the Bears. The number one pick in the draft out of Southern Cal, uh, according to their coaching staff, needs to rest. From from what? Three weeks of training camp? I mean, what what kind of rest do you need going into your first preseason game? You know, I guess you don't want to – I mean, I can't think of anything worse in the world than losing a starter in a preseason game. I, I can't disagree a, with that at all. Or a key contributor. Or a key contributor. I mean, I just but, as a fan, uh, when I watch the Packers, I hold my breath on every mm-hmm. preseason snap. It's one thing to get a hurt in a game that matters. I, I'll be glad. You know, the NFL is going to go to eighteen games probably next year. Right. Let's just let's just do away with these preseason games, man. Just do away with them. Of course, Don't I know. You think the, they could get by? They're not going to get rid of them because the owners still want to make a, an additional revenue stream. Yeah. But don't you think they've cut it back from what four to three now? Don't you think they could get by with two, and start training camp? I don't know the second week in August. That's still a month to get ready for the season. Uh yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I again, it's it's. They charge regular season prices for those preseason games. Exactly. So and people go because it's do, the NFL. But I, I'm telling you, if I lived in my, if I lived in Green Bay, as much as I love the Packers, or if I lived in any NFL town and was a fan of that team, I wouldn't spend a penny on preseason games. I'm sorry, I mean, it's a waste of money. First of all, you don't see the front line players. Most of the players you're watching, the first couple of weeks are not going to be around at the end of preseason camp. They're going to be cut. There'll be some rookies that'll make it. I'm not saying all of them will be cut, but some will. I mean, they're just they're just practice fodder out there for a couple of games. You see the the only game to go to, of course, they've cut them down to three preseason games, right? Right. So mm-hmm. it used to be the third game was the preseason game to go right. to because that, that was the one, the one exactly. where most of your starters played a quarter, maybe a half. 
and then you sat them down. I'm not even sure they play. I guess you, they play them in that third game a little bit and um, and then sit them down. But, gosh, losing a player in the preseason, that's just that's just awful. Uh, a couple of other notes. Um, Chapel Fowler from the state with a little story on Clemson. Uh, Clemson Athletics is changing their official TV partner ahead of the upcoming athletic year. The coaches shows and more will now be produced through the regional Fox station, Fox Carolina. They had previously partnered with the CBS affiliate WSPA. So they're moving from that WSPA over to the Fox station there in the upstate. So watch for that Tiger fans up that way. Uh, The NCAA has launched its NIL assist database. It will include aggregate data on NIL deals, NIL education tools, and a service provider registry. Regarding the NIL deal data, athletes are not currently required by NCAA rules to disclose deals, so the data won't be complete. I saw something on on there that would also uh, show publicly available NIL deals to athletes. Yeah. So it would tell you, like if you were an athlete, you would be able to see the deals that that are available to you and the public can see those too yeah that's on their that's on their dashboard of the of their database yeah we've got the south carolina american legion baseball championship tournament going on in florence at sparrow stadium and we've got florence post number one defeating fort mill post number 43 three to two and so florence post one will play camden and that will be i I, I guess that's a championship. This is the championship day. So I guess um, they play Camden 7-15 tonight in a championship game. Correct. To go to the uh, regionals, I believe, is the case, the way the American Legion is set up. And is this Florence a, is hit. Is this a winner-take-all game between these two? Do you know? That I'm not positive. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. But uh, Florence has had – Derek Urquhart, former Gamecock, has done just an amazing job with that team. I mean, they, they go – they've been to the World Series a couple of times. They've won the state championship multiple times. They've won, they've gone to the regionals. I mean, this is a really, really good Legion team, as is the one in Camden, the one in Newberry. I mean, we've got really good American Legion baseball across the state of South Carolina that most folks don't see because they play – during the summertime, and certainly their season starts to wind down when football season cranks up, so mm-hmm. got to get lost in the shuffle. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, before the break, let's go to Andy in Columbia. Take another quick phone call here on Sports Talk on this big Thursday night. Shane Beamer coming up. Andy, welcome in. How are you tonight? Well, I'm alive. I hope y'all are doing well. Well, that's a promising Happy note. Happy birthday to, to Gamecock Larry there. Hopefully I won't have to be worrying about 90. I don't think I'd. You'll make that it. Just seems, I hope not. I don't, it just seems like too long to go. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. Number what if one, your what if your Gamecocks what if your Gamecocks win ten games this year? Don't you don't you want to be around to see that continue? I'm not even going to be sixty. I'll be sixty five in February. I have plenty of time to watch my Gamecocks win. 10, 12, 13, 14 games before I have to worry about 90 years old. Mm. If they haven't won it by that time, that I'm getting close to 90, you might as well put me in the grave. So, <laughs> and he's know, just going to give up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't give up on life, talking, Andy. <laughs> when you're talking about preseason football, you know, when you're a season ticket holder, you don't have a choice. You get those crappy tickets in your plan. Yep. Okay. So don't you know? Don't sit here and tell us, corn. You wouldn't spend a penny on them because if you lived in Green Bay, that's true. You would be a season ticket holder, mm-hmm. and you'd be paying for those things. That's a good point. And number two, Caleb I wouldn't like Williams, it though. I wouldn't like it. You know why he's so tired? He's tired of counting those big piles of money he just hauled in. That would tire you out. Who's that? Williams, that's why he's not playing tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. Hauling around those uh wheelbarrow full of wheelbarrows full of money will, will tire out anybody. That's a good way to get yourself in shape. Pushing wheelbarrows hey, up a hill that's loaded with uh, you know, five million dollars in no, each one of them. He's just using his counting his counting hand to count the hundred dollar bills 
that he's got stacked up there, and that's mm-hmm. giving him strength in his arm for passing. That's another but thing. I'll tell you what. As a fan, I mean, I don't want to see the Packers. See, now the two teams playing tonight, they have to play four preseason games. So, I like, I don't want to ever see the Packers in the in the Hall of Fame game. That's an extra opportunity to get somebody hurt in a meaningless preseason game. The most well, meaningless, the first preseason game, just totally meaningless. Corn, y'all don't y'all won't have any Hall of Famers for many years, so they won't be putting y'all in there. That's Ouch. why these two teams are there is because of their Hall of Fame. Well, I mean, as soon as your washed up quarterback retires, he'll be going <laughs> in the Hall of Fame. So, yeah, as a Jet. He ain't going as a jet. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Hey, I don't know if y'all mentioned this, but you know it was a great trade the Panthers made. You know, for to to get to get this quarterback, you trade DJ Moore, who ends up signing a oh. big old contract with Chicago. Great mm-hmm. wide receiver. You know, they could have sat in a position, got stout, and you know, really had mm-hmm. some type of team. I'll tell you what, this clown that owns owns this team up in Charlotte. He he doesn't know what he's doing as, as an owner, and he is really knows how to screw over the fan base, and he's really turned South Carolina, really wishing that they would just call themselves the North Carolina Panthers and not the Carolina Panthers. Because he, I'll tell you what, Henry McCasters, he made him look like the biggest fool in the world. They took him to the woodshed, didn't they? As, as I call it, the... Inter, interstate um, exit to nowhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, exactly. I've actually been on that exit, and it does come to an end. You do have to make but, but a left what, or a right. But, yeah, but, but, but what's out there, Corn? Nothing. It is, you know. It's... Exactly. That's what, that's what, exactly. Maybe Henry's going to build him a house out there or something so he can have him. It is a pretty, it's a, it's a pretty exit. I mean, it really is. As exits go. Maybe him and Ralph Norman will each build a house out there. <laughs> and Ralph's company can build Listen, it. Listen. There's probably land that Ralph owns. I got full, you know, full disclosure here, not that it matters, but, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. I thought it was a good idea, a great idea to have the Panthers move their headquarters to South Carolina, training camp there in Rock Hill, everything else that they promised – who knew he was a liar? Who knew? I can't really everybody blame the governor, knew. and I can't blame everybody, everybody else. Knew. I mean, who knew he was a liar? Kevin Kevin and I were calling that from the start. Kevin did. Yes, wrong. he did. Did you call that, too? Yes. When we were talking on his show, I was like, this is going to be the biggest disaster that we've ever seen. Plus, you're taking money away from another part of the state, and it's ridiculous. And, you know, he made a fool out of all of us. And, you know, our tax money just went into a big nothing. As usual, you know, just like they found $1.8 billion, they're still arguing about where it came from. <laughs> well, my, <laughs> our state is so financially smart, you know, it's just, it just amazes me. But you gentlemen have a wonderful um, evening, and I'm glad football practice is starting. And, Corn, I'm glad you admitted that your gassers were really – just you having gas, because that's what I was thinking. As soon as you said that you were doing gassers, I was hoping no one was riding in the car with you, or they really have to have oxygen, oxygen masks fall down like they have I, in the plane. I'm just, I was, I, I was just trying to uh, create the same sensation that the players are going through. That's all I was trying to do. I'll tell you what, if it's that gassy kind of situation, boy, oh boy. Those are hard practices with that gas that like that. I'm telling you. Okay, fellas, and, and corn. Yes. You didn't tear up. You didn't tear the golf course up too bad at Beamer's thing last week, or did, did you? They didn't have the. Um, they didn't have I'll the just say right behind you cleaning up the divot. I'll did just say that? I left my mark. I figured you probably did. Like I'll just say that. Courses. I'll just say that uh, any small animals that needed to be, you know, buried, I left plenty of places for them to be to be put away as much as I hate to think of it. Thank you very much. Be back in just a moment.
We're with Major Billy Downer of the Department of Natural Resources. Major Downer, it's hunting season in South Carolina this fall, and folks need to be prepared from a legal standpoint. That's right, Phil. Everyone always needs to buy their hunting license or fishing license. Everyone always worries about losing their license. Well, now that's not a problem anymore because you can keep your license on your phone. That's right. Go Outdoors SC. It's an app. Look for it on your Apple or Android devices. You can buy your license. You can renew your boat registration, and it's all right there on your phone. Remember, Go Outdoors SC in your app store. Relax this summer with a promotional rate on select travel purchases with your Founders Federal Credit Union credit card. Now through August 31st, get 6.99% APR for six months on qualifying purchases, including airfare, hotels, restaurants, and cruise lines. Don't let interest rates slow you down this summer. Visit foundersfcu.com slash travel to learn more. Not a Founders member yet? Founders has the financial tools you need and the personalized service you deserve. Stop by an office or visit foundersfcu.com com to learn more about founders and see if you qualify for membership on march 1st 2025 the promotional apr will revert to the effective apr as previously disclosed call 800-845-1644 for details about credit costs and terms membership qualification required g3 here with tsunami bar sports and it's time for a fall preview that's right 720 chris drive 378 926 frontage road where you can now preview the best technology for golf known to man it's the tsunami bar it's live weight it's the only technology out where you get your tempo and flow going before you play now it also serves as a pattern support tool 720 chris drive frontage road 378 926 you also can visit the garage gym pro shop pick up your tools take them home and while you're here tour the scramble course six hole pitch and putt right now you've put in the work for your education the extra early extra late extra extra work that's because you understand education opens doors to better pay better opportunities and a better you Being educated about playing the lottery is no different. It helps you be a better player, one who knows when to play and when to take a rain check. The lottery's a game, so let's keep it fun. Learn more at sceducationlottery.com slash better you. If you're looking to stay hydrated this summer, turn toward a southern favorite, sweet South Carolina watermelons. One slice is equivalent to a glass of water and is just as effective as sports drinks for hydration. If you don't believe us, you can ask the Palmetto State's top football teams. The SC Watermelon Association will be serving up slices after summer practice to keep our teams fueled and hydrated. Visit scwatermelon.org for all the details and look for ripe South Carolina watermelons in your hometown. All right, more on the ongoing battle between Florida State, Clemson, and the ACC. This, I believe, a release from the Attorney General Office in Florida. Attorney General Ashley Moody this afternoon obtained secretive media contracts previously withheld from Florida State by the ACC. Documents the center of the fight with the ACC over the school's efforts to determine its rights if it leaves the conference. Through the uh, AG's action, the ACC has handed over six redacted media rights contracts and documents. The AG says it's a victory for transparency. The ACC has made documents available that are at the center of the legal fight with the conference. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. AG took legal action against the ACC for wrongly withholding public records from review. Now, in response to the action, the ACC has provided the state of Florida with the following documents redacted and produced in accordance with Florida Public Records Act, 2010 ACC Multimedia Agreement, 2012 Amendment and Extension, 2014 Second Amendment to Agreement, 2016 Amended and Restated Agreement, ACC ESPN Network Agreement of 2016, and Letter Amendment to the Amended. We'll be back. (laughs) 
All right, coming up, Shane Beamer in just a moment, recruiting as well. At the Olympics, USA women, 87-74 over Belgium. Brianna Stewart had 26 points for the uh, American women, and Asia Wilson had her typical huge game, played 34 minutes, had 23 points, 13 rebounds. Safe to call her the best women's player in the world. I don't think there's a real argument there. Pretty amazing. At all. Pretty amazing. And we probably need to get a couple of our women's players and also a couple of our men's players to go teach the uh, three on three teams how to play. Are they not, not doing that well? Three on three basketball needs to be in the Olympics. I think it's ridiculous. Just oh. five on five basketball is what we should be worried about. But yeah, I think I saw a stat today. Our two teams combined are one in six. Not good. No, not good at all. Not good. Not good. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here that really interests me to bring up where the Americans have done well. Of course, gymnastics, uh, Simone Biles won the gold, uh, the women's individual all around, so she's won that. Uh, maybe the greatest of all time, or arguably am, right up I there. I think that's probably the case, and Sunni Lee got the bronze. I really liked her more when her husband played for the Packers. He was really a good safety. (laughs) And so I thought they were a cute couple back then, but then he left. He left the Packers as a free agent, and uh, not happy about that. Sound like Bob Euchre in Major League Two. It's amazing what a change in uniform will do for a guy. (laughs) Um, (laughs) The Americans won the gold in women's team foil. They foiled foiled Italy um, in women's team foil. Okay, uh, rowing. Americans won the gold in the men's four. And uh, what else did we do? Nah, not a good sign here. China won the gold in shooting. So I don't particularly, not in, in, enthralled about that fact. Uh, USA took the silver in the women's 4 by 200 meter freestyle uh, in the pool. They won the gold in the 200 meter breaststroke. Uh, Kate Douglas got that and uh, took Silver in the 200-meter butterfly, Reagan Smith there. Then you had the women's boxing match between the sweet little girl from Italy and this big person from Algeria. (laughs) And, I mean, first of all, i got to be honest. Can I just say this? Okay, look, I appreciate women's sports. I'm all for it. Do we have to have women's boxing? I mean, who wants to see two I, women seriously a, box? Yeah. Oh, wrestling, okay, I can get into wrestling, you know, jello and all that, but mud, but boxing, oh, we got to draw the line here somewhere. Why do we have to have women boxing? I mean, seriously. If that's what they want to do, I'm, I would not, if my daughter, if I had a daughter, I would not steer her towards boxing nor MMA. Keep no, in mind, you also no, have that as well, no, which is no. considerably more violent. Well, we got a problem here because, you know, they think that the person from Algeria might not be qualified uh, uh, to be a woman, totally. And uh, the, the, the little girl from Italy took a shot on the nose and said, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. She said, I am done. Let me out of here. So, anyway, controversy there. Over to USC football. Where, you know, the person from uh, Algeria there could be a tight end, I think, on the Gamecock football team. Uh, Shane Beamer getting ready for his fourth camp in Columbia. Two bowl games, first two years, missed this past season. So he's burning inside to get the Gamecocks back into the postseason and more with this team. I think they've got a good team. I think they've got good players on this roster. I think they've got some stars uh, who are going to be the best some of the best in the SEC. So here is some of what Beamer had to say to the media today before the start of practice in the morning. So I've got a lot of work to do, but love this group. Uh, there's been a hunger and, and a desire to, to get better, a very purposeful group, a very invested group. It's been very evident since January when we came back in the spring semester uh, to get to work. And I can't wait to get out on the field tomorrow. I've, I told them earlier, and it's the truth. I don't think I've ever been more excited about starting practice and, and a season than I am this one. Uh, and it's because of the people that we have 
on our roster and, and the type of young men they are, the leadership we have, the hunger they have, how invested they are. So got a lot of work to do, but really excited about the people I get to do it with starting uh, tomorrow morning on the practice field. So with that, any questions? Shane, is there one position group or position competition that you're looking at more than any other over these next 30 days that says we've got to take care of that above all? Yeah, great question. Um, yes and no. I think there's a lot. I'm not trying to dodge the question, but I really do believe there's multiple. We met as a staff this morning, and, and I talked about all the all the things that really excite me about this team, which there's a lot, but then all the things that are, I don't want to say concerns, but are questions that we have to answer, and there's multiple. And, and who the kicker is going to be, you know, is something that we have to figure out. What does that um, – I'm going to go through basically every position, David. I'm sorry. But essentially, you know, okay, if O'Donnell Fortune's coming into the season as one starting corner, what does that opposite corner battle look like? Nick Eman Worry and DQ Smith come into the preseason as our two starting safeties. What does the depth look like behind those guys? How is this linebacker rotation going to shake out? Because you guys have heard me say it. We basically had a – three-man rotation last year I feel confident saying that we could have as much as a seven eight-man rotation as guy, as far as guys if they continue to come along that I feel like can help us win SEC football games what does that shake it or how does that shake out same thing you know we feel good about the D-line group but what's the rotation there obviously everybody wants to talk about the offensive line and the receiver position so I would probably say that one to answer your question just what it looks like not that we don't have capable people because we do but we've got more depth and athleticism and competition than last year on the really every position, but particularly on the offensive line and at the receiver position. And um, it's the truth that if you ask me today, what will the starting five look like on the offensive line game one? And who are your top six receivers game one? I really, truly, it's really, truly is still to be determined, you know, so I think a little bit of everything. There's competition. Um, what does Lenoris and Robbie in that situation, how does that continue to come along? Davis Bevel. Uh, but probably most most pertinent, most important right now would be, they're all important, but the most uh, up in the air, probably the receiver rotation and how that shakes out. You mentioned that the, the summer was elite uh, this, this summer. Can you point to two or three kind of tangible things that took it from really, really, really good to elite? I think um, obviously the physical part of it, when you just look at how some of these guys have changed their bodies this summer, whether it be gaining weight, guys that needed to gain weight, whether it be losing weight, guys that needed to lose weight. Um, coming out of spring practice, John, there's a, guy, a lot of guys that had some body weight issues, good or, uh, whether it be gaining or losing. And as we sit here right now, we're really, we've overcome those. And, and a couple, don't get me wrong, that still need to probably gain a little bit, lose a little bit, but we're in a great position from that standpoint would be one. Uh, how we've gotten stronger, if you look at what our guys of the strength gains that they've made from January to now, but in particular from May when they came back until now, we've gotten stronger. There's no question about it. And then you guys have heard me say it before, and it's the truth. Every coach in America would say this, but the summertime is just so critical because that's really when you're forming so much of your team from a leadership standpoint and, and the mental toughness and all that as well. And they've had some tough, hard, raw moments this summer as a team, and I just feel like we've taken a huge step just from a, a leadership standpoint, guys being willing to hold each other accountable, call each other out, when needed, just things like that. So overall, just I think the physical part of it, but then just the the overall team dynamic. I really feel like we've made some some strides in that department. Shane, you you mentioned you, you touched on Lenoris a little bit earlier. When you bring a guy like that in here, I mean, he could have probably won the starting job at a lot of different places across the country. He comes in here knowing, hey, you know, my year's not going to be spent. A lot of it on the field yeah what does that say about the kind of person he is the character he is that kind of guy that you'll hope that you hope to have leading this team yeah I think that's a uh that's a great point in that he he could have won a state championship and and had other schools obviously recruiting was recruiting him he wanted to stay at home and came here but I don't want to speak for Lenoris but I think it was uh very much got a chance to sit behind and learn from Spencer for a year you guys have heard me say it a bunch that I saw Spencer do that with Jalen Hurts at um at uh at Oklahoma as as well 
So I think the opportunity, one, stay in state, come to the University of South Carolina. It's not about, you know, I know everybody wants to play immediately and it's about instant gratification. I think he saw it as a year to redshirt and get stronger and learn the offense and, and put himself in position to have a great 2024. But not just Lenore. So, I mean, I got all the respect in the world for Robbie Ashford. He's essentially did the same thing coming here to compete as well and that you know Robbie a lot of the quarterbacks you guys know that we were active in the transfer portal market for quarterbacks and there are some quarterbacks that went to other schools that wanted to come here and rightfully so because of what we did with Spencer in the portal or what Spencer did coming here out of the portal wanted to come here but they wanted to be promised the starting quarterback job and right back there that core value says compete I'm a fraud if we don't truly compete so I didn't promise the job to anybody including Robbie Ashford or Davis Bevel but both those guys came here for the opportunity to compete and I think it says a lot about those guys as well that they didn't want something handed to them Lenoris knew he needed to come in here and work nothing's been handed to him but I think it goes back to him the kind of person he is his mom and dad and high school program he's coming from and saw the benefits here at South Carolina so much better and more for him long term and not, and not just immediate. You mentioned, uh, you know, just how many guys are, are coming back from injury and the activation period is one thing to, you know, hopefully prevent injury. Has there been anything else after last season in the offensive line that you guys have tried to do to, you know, prevent those things from happening, such as the activation period? Yeah, um, and don't make too big a deal out of the activation period. It was really, I mean, our guys have kind of been doing it for the weight room all summer. Like, hey, let's get warmed up before we go lift weights. And they come in here every day. So if all summer long, the weight workout started right here in this end zone where you guys are sitting for weight workouts. You know, they came in here, they did stuff leading up to the workout in the weight room, then they went and did the running and the lifting. So it's really just a carryover from what they've been doing in the weight room in a lot of ways as well and let's just get these guys I mean this was something back when Chip Kelly was coaching for the Eagles and I went up there one time and watched them practice and they essentially did it you know they had the whole team in the weight room and they kind of got warmed up and revved up and then they hit the field and full speed ahead from that point for practice so it's nothing like we're doing anything like rocket or or, or earth shattering but to answer your question um, I think it's all started going back literally to to January in a lot of ways with how we've done things. And I talked about it in whether Dallas or the media uh, golf last week that we've, you know, tweaked some things in the weight room, nothing major, but just tweak some of the exercises that we're doing, some of the things that we're doing just from a physical standpoint with their bodies, nutrition, training room, um, uh, leading into the summer. We're certainly going to tweak some things. I'm going to talk to the players about it tonight. Just not so much, you know, how we practice, but the schedule during the week, maybe a little bit more um, conducive to taking care of their bodies, whether it be getting out of here normally in preseason camp. We're getting out of here. The players are last few years, 9.15-ish at night. This year it's going to be probably closer to 8.30 each night when they're done over here or – each night before they leave they're going to be required to do some sort of like recovery exercise before they get out of here just to really try and prevent stuff on the front end as well but then again a lot of the injuries that happened last season like no matter what you do whether you have an activation period you don't have an activation period whether you um, uh, have a walk through at 9 23 or 9 15 or they get out of here at 8 30 or 9 or 9 15 whatever it is Case and Henry getting rolled up on in a game against North Carolina. I mean, you can't prevent that. But it's a lot of the soft tissue things that are preventable that you hope you do on the front that are hopefully preventable, whether it be somebody tearing his ACL covering a kickoff last year against North Carolina or somebody trying to chase down a ball carrier on the sideline and pulling his hamstring or somebody tearing his ACL jumping up to bat a pass the year before against Arkansas. You know, just trying to do as much looking at things and to prevent them. Um, taking care of their bodies, which they've got to be a pro about uh, also. And then for us, too, we've gone back as myself and the training staff and the strength and conditioning staff and looking at injuries. I mean, we took 45 minutes this morning as a whole coaching staff and just went back and watched every single injury from spring practice that resulted in a player missing more than one day of practice. And, okay, here's all the ankles. Here's all the hamstrings. Here's all the knees. Here's we had one concussion because a guy tripped and fell and hit his head on the ground, you know. But how can we prevent those? Were there signs leading up to it, you know? Was we got too many people on the ground or somebody tripped and just looking at everything that you're doing. But also understanding 
I'll shut up. I know this is like the longest answer in the history of like press conferences, but um, realizing that last year for us, and you said it in your question, it was primarily the offensive line centric were the injuries. But if you look at our overall injuries, it was pretty much on average with what we've had in previous years in a lot of ways. And it pretty much on average with the rest of the country in regards to the number of injuries that we had for us, it just happened to be at one position where we lost whatever it was six to season ending injuries and had nine different starting lineup combinations in the first nine games. So it was, yes, you have to look at the offensive line. And I think they've taken on a lot of that on their own. They stayed up here the whole month of May. We didn't make them. They wanted to stay because they're tired of not necessarily you guys, but they're tired of hearing people talk about how bad they are. So they really wanted to come up here and get their bodies right, get their nutrition right, get their body weight right, work together as a unit and get better in the month of May. So when their teammates came back in June, they're like, oh, shoot, look at what the offensive line's been doing in the whole month of May. And I think that's happened as well. And they've taken it upon themselves. And and it all starts, like I said, weight room, nutrition, training room, and then anything that we can do to help them as well. So, you know, sit down after that answer. Sorry. The Sports Talk Recruiting Report is sponsored by Seawells Catering. He had to sit down after that. I was fast asleep by the time he got finished with that answer. <laughs> Holy smokes. That was one long, but it was interesting stuff. I think he had interesting stuff to say. Mm-hmm. So, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, time for recruiting here on Sports Talk, brought to you by Seawells. Uh, if you're heading out for the soccer match Saturday night and you don't have parking, well, you better make a phone call tomorrow to Seawells, see if they still have spots available, 803-771-7385. Actually, why don't you go out for lunch tomorrow? Josh, we got a special lunch tomorrow. Yeah, roast beef Friday. Oh, sorry, roast beef Friday. You got southern fried chicken and bake, baked flounder fillets. Flounder, fresh out of the congaree. Doesn't come any better. Uh, and the, uh, the roast beef is, of course, top notch. And the Always. chicken is fantastic. So while you're there and you're looking for a parking spot for Gamecock football, or for the soccer match, you can just talk to Cal or the guys there about that, and they'll take care of you. And you got something that needs the very best in catering coming up for you this fall, go ahead and make your plans with Seawells. Make that phone call, 803-771-7385, online at seawellscateringsc.com. 2026 linebacker Keenan Britt was by South Carolina on Wednesday just in time for the dead period to commence uh, today. So we got in under the uh, under the line there. He's out of Oxford, Alabama. Came in with his parents for a close-up look at South Carolina. The Gamecocks have been strong with him to this point. And he talked to uh, Shane Beamer and he talked to Clayton White and he said he saw the whole campus and um, <clears throat> talked to Beamer and White and they talked a lot about football and how he would fit in on their defense. He also met with Robbie Ashford and Vicari Swain and Debo Williams and was very interested in the plan that White has for him. He'd be a hybrid type of player, first and second down in the box. He said they run a 3-3-5, but they base it out of a 4-2-5. So in the 3-3-5, he'll play the Will Backer. You got that, Chris? 3-3-5, based out of a 4-2-5, but in a 3-3-5, he'll play the Will Backer. <laughs> Love it. Okay, because the four two five, they would not have a weak side linebacker, right? They just have two middle linebackers. Uh, That's right. What? How do they? How do they determine what the uh, two guys are called? Uh, well, I guess one is uh, Sam middle? and one is uh, a Mike. Weak side, uh, maybe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they wouldn't necessarily have a Mike. I, I yeah. don't know. But yeah, I got all of that. Yeah. Uh, and mean, Be- Beamer, you know, kind of put the hard sell on him as to why uh, he should pick South Carolina, but he didn't pressure him. He said. So he said South Carolina is um, definitely up there with him as he's going to be announcing uh, coming up here soon. He's announcing on August the 10th. So he's ready to get it over with. And uh, he was at Oregon last weekend. And he's got uh, South Carolina, Oregon, Florida, Tennessee, and Ole Miss as his schools. 110 tackles last season with 10 sacks and 20 tackles for loss. He can also play as an edge rusher. 
USC sent out official offer to Riverside receiver Mikael Skinner today. Today was the first day that you could officially offer the 2025 class, which is a joke. I mean, it's a joke. This is what the NCAA, they, they did not see how foolish it is. Coaches have been offering players for months and taking commitments for months. But today is the day it becomes official. Everything else has been, <laughs> you know, maybe I'm offering you and maybe you're going to commit to me and maybe I'm going to – no, 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 no. They, real offers have been made. Real commitments have been taken. But the NCAA says you can't make an official offer. Just another rule that gets abused and nobody pays attention to it. But I mentioned uh, Skinner because he's been committed to Cincinnati but is looking at South Carolina, so official offer there. He was at South Carolina Tuesday. They also sent out an official offer to offensive guard Javon McFadden, 6'5", 300, of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and hadn't talked a whole lot about him. He hasn't visited South Carolina, I don't think. Uh, He's been to Ohio State for an official visit and their spring game, but might be someone to keep a watch on uh, into the season. Uh, Tonight, USC offered defensive tackle Joseph Mbachow, 6'6", 285, of Cameroon and Loganville, Georgia. Today, 2026 Gaffney quarterback Javon Gilmore committed to Arkansas. It's a kid that played at Ben Lippin last year and had a very good spring and summer and really blew up in the recruiting circles and had some big-time offers. Uh, South Carolina and Clemson, however, not among them yet. Uh, Shane Beamer did offer last night wide receiver Jackson Rep 58160 Christ Church. He ran at USC's camp on Friday. We noted it back then. He clocked a 4 3. USC is his second P4 offer. Boston College offered in April. Other D1 offers include Buffalo, Air Force, and Georgia State. Several FCS offers Furman, Charleston Southern, and Princeton. He caught 63 balls last season, 1,510 yards, 27 touchdowns, all-purpose yards, 23-93, and total of 32 touchdowns. So, speed. You can't coach speed, can you? No. That or in basketball size. No, you can't coach height. You can't coach speed. Some Mm -hmm. upcoming announcements. A big couple of days if you're South Carolina. Got several players who are going to pop, and maybe Clemson, too. So tomorrow, Juan Gaston, a big offensive tackle out of Georgia, a USC target. Georgia seems to be the favorite there. Also tomorrow, wide receiver Dylan Alfred, Clemson target, will finally, hopefully, announce for either Clemson or Ole Miss. Also tomorrow, Kendall Daniels, safety out of Virginia, who was thought to be committing to South Carolina months ago but hasn't done anything. Uh, And Clemson's been involved with him as well. Uh, He's announcing uh, tomorrow at some point. Saturday, you've got USC offensive lineman target Jalen Gilchrist announcing. Also Saturday, USC, going back to Gilchrist, um, South Carolina, Maryland looked pretty strong with him one way or the other. Uh, Jared Smith, defensive end out of Alabaster, Alabama, USC target. Likely according to the analysts, to pick Auburn. They've been pointing that way. And on the 18th, Mike Tyler tied in from Hammond, Duke, LSU, and West Virginia, as things stand now with him. So those are upcoming announcements to be looking out for. Okay, there you go. About to put the wraps on this puppy. So more from Clemson and South Carolina uh, tomorrow night. And Mike Morgan, by the way, obviously you notice he wasn't with us tonight. Traveling, Morgan on the move. He'll be with us tomorrow night probably at 6.30. Final thoughts, Chris? The NFL is looking at testing an automated first down measurement system, Phil. More technology coming to the game. Don't know if it'll be in tonight's preseason, but it will be somewhere along the line during preseason. We're robots. We're all robots. See you tomorrow.